A bat and a ball cost $1.10 in total. The bat cost $1 more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? In hearing this question, some attempted to say that the ball cost 10 cents, which is incorrect. The ball costs 5 cents. If a ball is put in this metal tube where the arrow is and is then shot out at high speed, what is the trajectory the ball will take when exiting the tube? 51% of students, when asked this question, draw the following trajectory, which is wrong. The correct trajectory is this one. Which is the biggest between these two orange balls? We perceive the one on the right as being bigger than the other, that they are the same size. Believe it or not, all these questions are connected by a very influential theory of cognition called dual process theory. Dual process theory explains what is going on when we answer these questions. And it also sheds some light on how to avoid making mistakes. So, how does it work? According to dual process theory, there are two distinct cognitive processes that operate in our minds. A fast and intuitive automatic process called system one, and a slower, more deliberate and rational process called System 2. The System 1 process efficiently provides us with intuitions, useful heuristics, quick rules of thumb to operate in the world. While the System 2 process requires conscious effort that allows us to reason deeply, sequentially, rationally on things. It makes sense that our brains would work like this. We do not have infinite processing power, but we have a quasi-infinite amount of actions we can take at every moment. So we need some quick heuristics, some rules of thumb that do not cost many cognitive resources to orient ourselves at every moment. But if instead we need to hunker down and think more step by step, more sequentially about a certain problem or a certain issue, we also have the ability to do so. In decision making, there is a trade-off between speed and accuracy. Slow and methodical thinking is more accurate, but costs more resources, while fast intuitions are very efficient but are not always accurate. The way our cognition works, according to dual process theory, reflects this trade-off. Going back to our initial examples, we can see that the possible mistakes would have been caused by system one thinking. This is the one that uses quick rules of thumb to orient ourselves in the world. In the first question, the rule of thumb may have been something like, when you are given a sum of two numbers and another number, Usually, to obtain the remaining number, you just need to subtract the last number from the sum. In the second question, the rule of thumb might have been something like, objects usually stay on the path they are put. And in the third question, the uh, rule of thumb might have been something like, small objects are smaller than larger objects. Now, these are just examples to give you an idea, but we don't know exactly what is going on, especially in the third case, um, there are conflicting pieces of evidence in the literature. It's important to understand that even if system one thinking can generate mistakes, it is not bad. It is very efficient and useful. Although it gave us the wrong answer in this example, it gives us mostly good answers in more familiar cases. And more importantly, it is necessary. We can't rely on slow thinking all the time. Later we will see how one might tune his system one thinking to make it less error prone. Once you take on the paradigm proposed by dual process theory, you notice that many other domains of cognition can be framed in a similar manner. And many biases can be explained as being generated by the quick heuristics typical of system one thinking. In the sociological domain, when we perceive an individual, salient stereotypes pertaining to them are activated automatically. This can be viewed as system one thinking, performing a rough categorization that can sometimes lead us in error. In the logical domain, when one tries to dismiss an argument through an ad hominem fallacy, this may be viewed as a quick heuristic generated by a system one process to quickly discard arguments from unreliable sources without the need to evaluate them. It's efficient, but we lose accuracy. In the epistemic domain, we tend to lend greater credibility to claims that are repeated a number of times. 
even if they are false. A bias, seemingly ingrained in our system one thinking, which associates frequent claims with inherent truthfulness. This bias gets exploited a lot in politics. Some even think that the moral domain of cognition works in the same way. We might instinctively feel that something is wrong, but then, reflecting on the matter, we realize we had no reason to believe so. It's kind of spooky how encompassing the paradigm proposed by dual process theory may be. For instance, I sometimes think that the current political climate, instead of the usual left and right divide, can sometimes better be thought of as system one thinkers versus people who have more time to engage in system two thinking. But these are just my machinations. <laughs> so yeah, dual process theory, big boy, can make you think differently about many things. But now for the more practical part. How do we stop falling into the mistakes generated by System 1 thinking? A first step is awareness. Now that you know what might be going on inside your brain, you might want to sometimes double check your intuitions. For instance, if you have a very important decision to make, you might want to engage in System 2 thinking, spending some time pondering whether your gut feelings are correct or not. The best cases to engage in System 2 thinking are unfamiliar ones. This is because the purpose of intuitions we have developed is to serve us well on average. So in edge cases, they have a higher chance of being out of tune. An example of this may be provided by people who are already familiar with the existence of optical illusions, such as the one present in the third question. So when these people see the two balls, they might think something like, oh, wait a second, wait a second. This looks like one of those edge cases where my eyes might be deceiving me. So what if I engage in a slow process? What if I take a ruler and measure the size of the two balls to avoid making mistakes? What then, huh? What then? See, knowing that you can be biased in certain settings is a good starting point to correct the bias. But aside from using System 2 thinking to correct our intuitions, there is some very interesting research that tells us that we can de-bias our intuitions directly, that we can change our intuitions about things. Indeed, after a short training session, participants in a study got the right intuitive answer to a question similar to the bat and ball one. And the sound intuitions persisted for at least two months. The training session involved repeated exposure to similar problems and an explanation of the logic behind the correct answer. The surprising part is that after the training session, when faced with a problem of the same type, participants seemed to generate the correct intuitions automatically. No system 2 thinking involved. For some of you trained in physics, this might have happened to you when considering the trajectory of a steel ball problem. The correct intuition might have been automatically generated in you because you already had experience learning about the trajectory of objects through system 2 thinking in courses concerning physics. So it seems like with some work, we can also make our intuitions better. 